In our cut tapping video, we looked at choosing the right tap to direct our chips, our cut thread wire, either out of the hole or deeper into it. Now we use a snow plow and some fake snow to show just how the angles on our tap affect this chip direction. For today's trick, we remove the chips entirely, gone. Now taking these chips out of the equation will solve all kinds of issues for us as machinists. We unpack this fascinating and mysterious process right now in this Haas Tip of the Day. This video is on form taps, a special kind of tap that squishes the material in order to create the threads. Now it hammers out the material with each bump on the form tap as opposed to our cut taps that remove the material by cutting with sharp edges like a drill bit or end mill. We already have some really good options for cut tapping. We can use our spiral point taps for through holes, pushing the chips forward. We can use our spiral flute taps for blind holes. They're a bit weaker, but great for threading right to the bottom of a hole. So why would we wanna try an entirely different style of tap, a form tap? Well, cause they can last forever. They are bulletproof on the right materials. Well, on softer metals, we can increase our tool life by as much as 10 or even 20 times. And in many cases, we can run our form taps faster at a higher RPM than a cut tap, saving some cycle time. But mainly, it is about tool life and creating a really reliable process. Form taps are strong, freakishly strong for a tap. A spiral flute tap needs deep gullets in between the flutes to allow our cut thread wire to escape up and out of the hole. A spiral point tap has shallow gullets, giving us a stronger core. These gaps are just deep enough to provide us with a space for our cutting edges and for coolant to find its way into the hole. Now a form tap has the strongest core of all taps with no cutting edges at all and no need for gullets, except maybe a small runner for coolant to escape from blind holes. With no sharp edges at all to quickly wear out, it is hard to beat a form tap for endurance. And when tapping to the bottom of blind holes, uh, we could tap with a, a cutting spiral point tap, a plug tap, but that's gonna be pushing the, the chips farther into the hole. You can't go right to the bottom, just can't do it. We could use a spiral flute cutting tap. You can get to the bottom of a hole, but if it's a really deep hole, that gets scary. And if it's tough material, that's downright terrifying. But with a form tap, you could go just about as deep as you would like. You just can't do that with a cut tap. Form tapping is too important for us to ignore. We're gonna look at three key points right now that are gonna get us tapping quickly. And the first key is knowing what we can and cannot form tap, what we can roll tap and what materials we absolutely cannot roll tap. It is all about material ductility. Now, ductile just means that a material can be drawn or led into a thin wire. And the root of that word, duct, means to lead or draw, just like how copper can be drawn into copper wire. Now, aqueducts lead water. Air ducts lead air. And ductile materials can be led where we want. They can be formed. On this side, you have ductile materials, which can be form tapped. And on the far side, we've got brittle materials uh, that cannot be formed. They must be cut tapped. Aluminum, like 6061 and 7075, are ductile and great for form tapping. You can tell that this material took the shape of the form tap. You can see this wave of material as it comes up on the crest of these threads. Aluminum castings are great for form tapping, as long as they contain less than 12% silicon, which can harden the material and make it more brittle. Low carbon steels like 1018 and 1020, ductile, great for form tapping. Many brass and copper alloys, formable if they're ductile, and even 300 series stainless steels. If a metal creates long stringy chips when drilled, 
then it is ductile. If it creates short chips, like when drilling cast iron, then it is not ductile. It is more brittle and won't form tap well. Now I did form tap this one hole on this cast iron part, and it looks just terrible. If we zoom in on that cross section, you can tell that the form tap crushed the material, turned it into dust, because it's too brittle to be form tapped. The rest of these holes were cut tapped, and they look and function terrific. But in general, we cannot form tap cast iron. In fact, if we go to the website for our form taps, we're gonna see our speed and feed chart, we're gonna see our ISO material recommendations, and it will show steels. Sure, most steels we can form tap, uh, they're ductile. We go down and we can see stainless steels, like our 300 series stainless. We can form tap those. We get down to cast iron, and there's nothing showing there because there is no form tap that we sell, that anyone sells, that is good for cast iron. Too brittle. Going down that list, we see aluminum. Yes, we can form tap most aluminums unless it's got more than 12% silicon. We've got high temp alloys, no, they're too hard. Hardened materials, no, too hard. There are some materials that we should not be form tapping. If we want some more information, we can go to the speed and feed chart on the website. There's actually a list of materials underneath the VDI 3323 spec. If we look up that spec, there's all these different material groups that are very specific. Uh, you know, group 23, 24, 25 are okay, 26, 27 are not, that type of thing. Um, there's very specific VDI 3323 groups that we can and cannot form tap. We're gonna talk more about this when we get the inspection portion of this video, but like brass is a, is a good one. Some brasses can be form tap. C260, great. Uh, it's just got a lot of copper and zinc, perfect. The more common brass, like a C360, it's got lead added in order to make it more machinable so it breaks a chip better, but adding that lead to the brass uh, turning it into the C360 material also makes the material more brittle. Great for machining with an end mill, really bad for forming it with a form tap. So we need to be careful. We need to look at that speed and feed chart, look up our exact material group to know what we can and cannot form tap. The other part of our material key is knowing how hard it is. If the material has been heat treated, we cannot form tap it. Uh, we're usually form tapping annealed material, something below 25 HRC. Now, some will go as hard as 30 or 35 HRC, but 25 HRC is my soft lie in the sand. When a form tap comes in, it deforms the material, creating waves of metal that rise far above their initial level. Now, this final line is reached only after form tapping. This initial line of material was created prior to form tapping by our tap drill, which brings us to our key number two, what I think is the most important part of form tapping, and that is our tap drill choice. Now, when we cut tap, our tap drill creates our thread minor diameter directly. Even after tapping, that minor diameter will stay at pretty much the same size as the drill that created it. With a form tap, our thread minor diameter is literally a moving target. It measures one thing before tapping and something quite different after. With a cut tap, our drill diameter is our thread minor diameter. They are the same thing, and that never changes on us. Now, our form taps are gonna require very specific tap drill sizes. We can't use the same tap drill charts that we would for cut taps when form tapping. We need a form tap tap drill chart. And these guys are set up generally uh, to give us a specific drill size that will equate to a 65% thread percentage. And we're gonna look at that right now at the whiteboard. We're gonna look and see where these thread percentage values come from. It took generations for us to land on 60 degree threads as our standard angle. And what started out as sharp V-form threads eventually had flats or rounded edges added to make tools and parts easier to make and measure. P is our pitch, the distance between threads 
on regular single start threads. Now the height of our threads, H, is always 0.866 times our pitch. It is a ratio. And this is just the way the trigonometry will always work out for 60 degree threads, no matter our pitch or how many threads per inch. Now we would think that 100% thread would be the height of our thread from our theoretical point to point, our H value. And that would make sense, but that is not how it works. No, for the purposes of thread percentages, a perfect 100% thread is 6 eighths of our H height. This is our maximum thread height. If the threads were any taller, our screws would drag. Our thread percentage is always measured from our theoretical basic major diameter, like 0.5 inches on a half 13 thread. Now, using this definition of a 100% thread percentage, a good ID thread is going to fall somewhere between 65 and 80%. Now, this major diameter behaves like a datum that we measure from. This is where that 65% thread percentage value comes from on our form tap drill chart. But we're not doing the math. We don't go and calculate our thread percentages every time we tap a hole. We just don't. We never calculate those values. Why? Because the maximum and minimum minor diameter, it's already set in stone for us in the ISO standards, in the DIN standards, in the ANSI standards. And those values are written down for us in our machinery's handbook for our 2B inch class of threads, our 3B inch class of threads. Those values are written down for us in our mechanical and metal trades handbook here for our metric threads, our 6H class of threads. Not only that, but we have created more detailed tap drill charts for you here for form taps only, which lists that reference value, that maximum and minimum minor diameter value for each size thread. We don't care about the thread percentage. We have to make sure that the gauge pin that we use to measure the part is within this size or this size, otherwise, it's a bad thread. That's all we care about when inspecting threads. And we've listed them there for you for both our metric parts and our inch parts. And this brings us to our third key point, inspection. Key one was our material choice. Key two was our drill choice. And key three is our inspection. And if we inspect everything properly, we can actually tell if we made good choices earlier in the process. Now, when it comes to inspecting our form tap threads, it all comes down to our minor diameters. Now, we're gonna show you an example here, one example, and we're gonna use a 1 half 13 UNC 2B thread to check. We're gonna go ahead and start with a plug gauge. This is a, uh, a half 13 UNC 2B thread plug gauge, and if the go side fits all the way in, and the no-go side does not fit, or at least not more than a turn, then we know that our pitch diameter is correct, that our, our thread pitch is where it should be. Now, all of these threaded holes have passed our thread pitch plug gauge test. What we have to check now is our minor diameter. Now, on our chart for a half 13, we can see that our minor diameter for a half 13 UNC 2B thread needs to be between 0.417 inches and 0.434 inches in diameter. We've gone ahead and set up this, this go no go gauge set up here, 0 0.417, 0 0.434. And if the go fits and the no go doesn't fit, then we know that our minor diameter, at least on this part, is correct. Now we've gone ahead and checked these you know, three, four parts here, and they've all passed the test. But what is kind of strange, which is fascinating, is that they don't have the same minor diameter, even though they were all made with the exact same drill, 11.8 millimeter, and the exact same form tap, this half 13 form tap. This 1018 mild steel, largest pin is 0.429, our aluminum, 6061 comes in at 0.425 minor diameter, 425. And our 303 stainless steel comes in at 0.423.
So that's, that's a big spread, like 6,007 inch difference in minor diameter when they were all drilled and tapped with the same tools. So why is that? Well, they all have a different ductility. And if you want to, you can actually go and Google this. Google percent elongation. If you want to, you can go take a class on materials engineering. And percent elongation is actually uh, the way that we might measure ductility. These all cross the line. We can form tap all of these materials, but they're not all the same. A 303 stainless might have 40% elongation. Uh, our aluminum and our mild steel might be closer to 15 or 20% elongation. And our copper on this side might be 35% elongation. These are all uh, formable. They all have enough ductility to form tap, but they might end up in different spots. This is why when we give you a drill and tap chart, we shoot for 65% thread, but we don't know what material you're actually going to be tapping. So this tap chart gives you the next size drill bit above and below the next common size drill bit uh, that you might need to adjust things just a little bit bigger or smaller. Now, it used to be in the United States at least that all we had to play with were inch drill bits. We had fractional drill bits. We had our gauge drill bits, which are both letter and number. And these all have different ranges. They fill in the gaps pretty nicely with each other. But today, if we're gonna be doing form taps, we also need a set of metric drill bits because too many of the, of the taps on this sheet to be in the sweet spot right in the middle of our minor diameter, we need to be running a metric drill or a fraction or a letter or a number drill. So we've listed only the common sizes on our drill chart and to make the hole bigger or smaller, just go with the next drill up or down. That's what we're doing today. So it's time 2025 to go buy yourself a set of metric drill bits. Follow the link in the description and you can download for yourself these specific metric and inch form tap drill charts. We have also given you this complete shop drill chart that lists most of the common metric and inch form and cut taps and the matching tap drills for these taps, making use of fraction, letter, number, and metric drill bits. Now, coming over a little bit further, we've got some materials here. This is our cast iron, and the percent elongation of cast iron is right around 0%. It is really brittle. And again, that doesn't mean that we can't tap it. It's just we've got to use a cut tap, not a form tap, because it's too brittle to form tap. And how do we know this? Well, we can inspect the threads, but also when we checked that minor diameter with a gauge pin, it wasn't even within range. It came in at 0.435 inches in diameter. Out of spec, it wasn't even a good part when it should have been right in the middle of our tolerance based on our drill and our tap. Same thing with this C360 brass. We talked about it. So this is a VDI 3323. It's a group 26 copper alloy because um, it's got lead in it. It's got great machinability. The lead helps with that, but it makes it more brittle and it doesn't form properly. We should not be form tapping this type of brass, C360. C110, sure, C260, sure. The minor diameter on this hole is also 0.435 because when the form tap came in, it just, the material barely budged. It didn't create the flow of material that was needed. It was too brittle. And we saw all of that. We could tell that something wasn't right just by inspecting that minor diameter. Form tapping, it is my first choice when creating internal threads. The taps last longer and it just creates a very reliable process once we know what the rules are. Material choice, drill choice, and inspection. Now be sure to, to click on the link in the description and download your form tap drill chart. And please, please leave a comment. Let us know what material that you're form tapping and how things are working out for you. Well, thank you for letting us be a part of your success and for watching this Haas Tip of the Day.